Welcome back to Real Estate Investing with Alex Deacon. My name is Adam. I am your host, aka the person that softballs questions to the main man, the Deacon of Real Estate, Alex Deacon. Alex, how are we doing today, sir? Doing good, buddy. How are you doing? I am doing well on a Friday. Once again, back on our Friday schedule. I like it. Yep. Too. I like it. I like it. Let's uh, let's get some plugs out of the way first, guys. You know this is coming. Make sure you're visiting dhrea.com. That's our website here at Deacon Hoover Real Estate Advisors. Pittsburgh Property Management is where you want to go for Mace Property Management. Check out check us out on all of our social media channels: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just search Deacon Hoover YouTube channel set up. Uh, go to Alex De- uh, Deacon's meetups. Uh, just search Alex Deacon Meetup uh, on Meetup.com, and you'll find his two different meetups: um, his real, real estate investing uh, networking workshops and his Pittsburgh landlording uh, uh, workshops on there as well. And you can email Alex directly if need be. Alex at alexdeacon.com. He always welcomes emails as long as they're constructive. <laughs> and, and not too long. You lose my attention after yeah, right. about. You got two about. Sentences. I was just you got two lines yeah. to get to get a point across. Um, but so now the plugs are out of the way. Let's get to the show. What we're going to do in this segment today, guys, is we're going to talk about uh, buying quality versus quantity and where the benefits lie and where the pros and cons are here. So, um, Alex, we yes, may sir. or may not have gone over this before. It's always mm-hmm. good for a refresher. I, I we've done this will be episode ninety six, creeping up on a hundred. So that's good. That's, that's awesome. awesome. That's real awesome. Doesn't, to be doesn't honest, seem like that many, but. Not at all. We're gonna have a big one for a hundred. But um, so talk to us about it. What do you think? Quality versus quantity? I mean, yes, yeah, it's just something I preach all the time, and unfortunately for me, I've had to learn it, and it's cost me just hundreds of thousands of dollars, um, and a lot of just undue stress, and you know, so on and so forth. So, and I'm still making the the, the same mistakes, you know, that I've always made, but just less less quantity of the bad the bad decisions because you're always going to have you're always going to have losers and winners like if you listen to any of the highly successful people um, they're going to tell you basically that you're going to have businesses you might have eight businesses that lose money mm-hmm. and two that are just that you knock them out of the park mm-hmm. right yeah, I've, I've heard that a lot right. yeah I watch shows like um, Marcus Lemonis uh, The Prophet it's a show on NBC I believe and you've listened to podcasts like with uh, Tony uh, uh, Tony Robbins, or listened to Darren Hardy, who wrote, uh, who's written some really good books. They all talk about the same thing. I'm a big Gary Vaynerchuk guy, yeah. So. Yeah, they all talk about, and they, this is, and, and like Anthony uh, Anthony Robbins and uh, Darren Hardy, they've interviewed hundreds, maybe thousands of the most successful people on the planet, and they all pretty much echo the same thing. So what? But in real estate. I just don't think you can afford to make eight bad decisions and two good ones. That's that doesn't ring ring true with real estate, and maybe it doesn't in certain businesses. But um, yeah, real estate, you're always going to make some bad decisions. You just you make more good decisions than bad, and make sure that you're learning from the decisions that lost money. That's usually how most people learn is through their mistakes, mm-hmm. and that's how I've learned. And that's when I do these podcasts, I share those those successes and those mistakes and, and I'm hoping that uh, folks listening can learn from my pain and my success and piggyback off of that and propel themselves quicker to where they need to be versus you know paying their dues. I mean right. you're still going to pay no matter how many podcasts you listen to, how many books you listen to, you still have to get dirty and, and fall yep. and get back up. Yep. That's the only way to learn. So the the discussion today is just the topic is uh, how important it is to buy quality versus quantity. Now the, the question is what is quality? Mm-hmm. And when you're new, you don't know what quality is. You know, some people just and some and some investors it takes them a lot longer to figure that out. So in my mind, I'll tell you what quality is in, in a few different scenarios. Okay, there's certain ways to buy real estate. You could buy quality in a good school district. It's already an established neighborhood. Everybody wants to live there. That's where everybody wants to buy real estate because it's very safe. You can basically estimate what it's going to sell for 10 years from now, and it's always going to go up. It's always going to be a high-demand area. So that's simple. But what's the problem with that is everybody wants it. So I'll, a couple of good examples is we went to see a, a couple properties that wholesalers had 
on the market. These are off-market properties. Wholesalers had them in their inventory and they were selling them. One was in Upper St. Clair recently and one was in um, Scott Township. Both great areas. Both yeah. great areas. The, the properties were just swarming with other investors. So the one we went into, I'm like, okay, we made an offer. It was over full price. The, the, the person selling it told us that it went far beyond what full price, like our offer. So I was like, okay, well, that's insane. Then the next one, I drove by last night. I literally drove by it. I saw how many people were there. I looked at the outside of the house. I knew right away that based on what I see from the outside, based on what the sales price was, 95000 and based on how many people were there, right. and based on how quality that market is, I wasn't even going inside. I didn't even get out of my truck. The demand almost kind of pushed you away. I just, drove, I just drove by. <laughs> I drove 20 minutes to get there, and I just drove back home. So when I go to the store for food, I'm like, I don't even know what I want. And I drive right back home and make what I had at home anyway. So, yeah, it's, but, so the quality is high demand. So, but the quality always doesn't have to be like a great school district in a great area. Okay. Quality can be how the property is situated. Does the property, maybe the property is in a, a C area, right? So A area is, is, is like upper St. Clair, high demand, high average household income uh high demand school district b is you know just may step down from a and c is like kind of marginal could be some some higher crime there it can be lower average income uh and a d area is you know like what we consider we call war zones right and they're just really bad areas and you you know you can you 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 don't feel safe walking on the street sometimes at at night so and maybe even more to take yeah. sometimes, but uh, A, B, C, and D areas. So a, a lot of where I focus on is I'm always looking in A areas, I'm always looking in B areas, I'm always looking in C areas, and I'm always looking in D areas. This depends on what's available, how much time I have in uh, in my week. I would look in a D area because maybe that D area is an area I feel is going to be a C, a B, or an A area. Okay, those. The D areas, you can buy quality there, right? You can buy a quality D property. It sits on a nice lot. Mm -hmm. It's on a nicer street in the D area. Uh, It's a higher quality construction, meaning it was just built well, and the items that have been done to it, like the roof, the gutters, the sewer line, the major mechanical, seem to be in really good shape. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to have this huge money pit over the next 10 years while you're waiting for that area to turn around. So at least you're buying something that in a D area that's high quality for D area. Right, right. And it's going to at least break even, maybe make a little bit of money because that's not what your primary focus is there. Your primary focus is to accumulate as many properties in that area as possible because you have a hunch that that area is going to go up in value by 10 fold in the next five years and, and this is where knowing <clears throat> your area i think is is very important too because and I, i'm not a, i'm personally not an investor but if i was an investor you know where i live half of the road i probably wouldn't live on the other mm-hmm. half is mm-hmm. fantastic i'd buy five houses there you know what i mm-hmm. mean so i think that's the difference and it would probably be considered a, a maybe a low c or a d area you know mm-hmm. um but on my end of town or, or even like the street it doesn't feel like a D area. It feels more like a B or a C area. Right. So yeah, that's... I know. I know. I know where you live. So yeah, yep. you're right. If you just go down maybe five or six blocks, it's it's kind of a crummy. little sketchy. Yeah, it just doesn't feel right. And where you are, it, it's kind of quiet and out of the way. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, you can buy quality D properties, and but the 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 plan there is. It can be twofold. You could have buy a high quality D property and just rent at Section Eight, and then just cash flowing, right? But there, the other way to buy a high quality D property is because remember all the crap you got to put up with in the D areas. Yep. But the high quality D property that's going to go up in value ten or twenty times what it is currently now, and I've seen it happen. Um, that's where the real wealth is created. The question you have to ask yourself is, what makes me think this is going to be the next hot area? It, and most of the time when I talk to people, it's all emotional. Oh, I just feel it is. Or they're putting in a uh, candy store down on the end of the cor- on the corner. Now the 
you know, it's going to go up in value. They're building a casino here. They're building a uh, a new stadium here. I've seen it happen so many times where they built this and they built that, and nothing nothing happens to the area. Right. And you have to be super patient, and it may be 20 years before right. that happens. So if anybody tells you they know when an area is going to turn around, they don't. There, there's just no <laughs> way. Um, it's some of it's some of it might be data, and some of it might be good information, but a lot of it's also going to be their intuition and their feeling and, and luck. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you can buy D quality. You can buy high quality in C areas also. Mm-hmm. And again, this is this. A lot of these high quality, quote unquote, is the same for every area. For example. Like I like to buy properties that are level lots. I don't like to buy properties that have on street parking. I don't like to have properties that have big retaining walls in the front that are, you know, and gonna be an issue in the future and have a lot of steps or maybe in disrepair. And parking's real tight. And depending on the area, parking sometimes is not an issue because like Lawrenceville's super white hot right now and parking's not very good there. Right. Oh, but horrible. parking does make t- parking always does matter. Okay? And what I suggest is wherever you're buying, focus on buying a better quality property versus looking at just the numbers. So the thing you need to know is what is quality and when you're factoring in your numbers. And we've done podcasts and to, uh, as far as ROI and figuring out your numbers and all that stuff many times. That's just going to come with experience. Like, again, I can't teach you what a quality property is until you get to know the market, the neighborhood, and neighborhoods can be street-specific. Like like you said, your neighbor, three streets over, is kind of crummy. Where you live, it's different. Right. Uh, it can be that much of a difference. I was just doing a market analysis on a property that I didn't know the area super well. It's in Pittsburgh, but I didn't know the area very well. And it was funny because I did a quarter mile radius from this property and you could see where this property was in this circle all these properties near the subject property I was looking at were selling like 50 to 150 okay. if you just went and this is all within a quarter mile radius so if you just went one street over and then to a different neighborhood those homes over there were 400 to 800,000 and not knowing the neighborhood if you use that whole quarter mile radius, that could really throw off your numbers. That's right? like that Ingram borderline where houses can just jump up. Yeah, it could really throw off your numbers. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, really, you think you might know the neighborhood or the market because you have a computer and you can go online and, and look at that stuff, but you don't. You need to get your feet on the ground and go and, and look at these neighborhoods and, and really get to know them inside and out to know and understand what quality is and what quality isn't. And then if you're a landlord, of course, you want to pick quality properties that the tenant's going to like, you know, and amenities that the tenant will like. And a useful yard, if it's like more of a family a neighborhood, you want you want something that has a useful yard. You want something that the tenants can enjoy because they're going to they're gonna, you're going to retain them. They're going to stay longer. They're going to want they're not going to want to leave. So just so I mean, and this, do you have any questions that are? No, no. I mean, I, do you think uh, you know on my end of things? Um, what are things when 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 you are looking at quality, especially in maybe like we'll, we'll say a C or a D area? What's an instant turnoff for you so that you know you know what I don't need to add this to my portfolio. This right now is just uh, quantity versus quality. Okay, I, here's some real good ones. Power lines. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> if you have a power line, like you can reach out and grab it. Yep. Probably not a good one. Um, railroad tracks right in the backyard. Probably not a good one. Good call. Uh, right, like your house is right up against the street, which is you know, and and maybe the street's a four lane highway, even a two lane road that there's high speeds on it. You don't you want to stay away from those. Uh, lots of steps to the front door, and no no parking. So you're big against steps on it. Well, <laughs> think, of, think about it. If you wanted to buy something that was level entry or rent something level entry versus rent something that is. 30 steps yeah, or buy some of those 30 yep. steps it's going to affect the value especially in this climate too, yeah. yeah yeah especially yeah especially like in the winter so um, what else would be something close to it'd be real cognizant of streams there might be a small stream in your backyard mm-hmm. but that might be considered a flood zone oh yeah yeah absolutely the house I grew up in used to flood all the time yep 
and it might not be considered a flood zone. Like I have four properties right now that never flood, but I pay flood insurance on each and every one of them because they're considered flood zones. It's wow. it's BS, but it, if you don't do that research and, and your flood insurance is 2000 versus 500 that $1,500 a year in profit could affect your bottom line tremendously. Maybe you're only going to make 200 a month and it's $2,400 a year profit and all of a sudden that's reduced by $1,500. That's over half. So knowing, uh, making sure that it's in a, it's not in a flood zone that may not flood, right. but it, it still may affect what you have you still have to buy flood insurance. Pocket, right? Unless yeah. you don't have a mortgage, then you don't have to buy flood insurance. If you have a mortgage, they're going to require it. Um, what other things do I look at? Um, I know like roofing, all, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look at the general structure and say, okay, is that siding, it's painted, it's asbestos shingled siding, it's it's wood siding, it's uh, insel brick siding, which is like asphalt shingle type siding. Eventually, that stuff's going to deteriorate and, and eventually I'm going to have to get rid of it. Uh, dispose of it, which and asbestos shingles, you know, you have to get rid of those, and that, that's going to be costly. So you look at all of that as far as quality, meaning in that sense, the quality there is keeping your construction costs, rehab costs, repair costs down over the next 15 years. Because mm-hmm. if the roof is going bad and the siding is going bad and and the box gutters are at the end of their useful life. I mean, you're talking on a, on a large house that can be thirty to forty thousand dollars. That if you're not accounting for that in ten years, it, it adds up. And do that ten times by ten properties that need thirty or forty in deferred maintenance, and you have ten properties that are all losers. You just don't feel it now, but it's going to hit you at some point. And it'll just it'll slowly suck the life out. Mm-hmm. Of you. And that's yeah. a deterrent. That's where people get frustrated. That's where. Oh yeah, so that, that that happened to me. Oh. And a lot so that yeah take it from me I look at all that before I make a, a decision those are good because a lot of those yeah. I wouldn't even have thought like train tracks and stuff like that it's just stuff you don't think about um, mm-hmm. even when you're I, I, and I, I will agree with you on something that I, I have never been a fan of a house that's next to a road that even it's more of a you know a suburbia but if, if a speed limit is 45 and you know that's right outside your, your door 45 or 50 one of those you know roads I don't necessarily with a child I don't necessarily feel comfortable with that you know <laughs> But that's just uh, that's just me on that end of things. But I don't know, Alex. Anything else you'd like to sprinkle on top of this before we finish off uh, quality versus quantity, like a nice baked cupcake? <laughs> no, honestly, that's it. That's it. That's it. We we've covered this many times, but I, I yeah, they, this is something that you. Uh, it's an important topic. Yeah. So and it's good to go back and always yeah. go back and, and refresh the basics, you know, because yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, we always got to go back and, and start with what got us there in the first place. Yeah, um, absolutely. All right. Well, Alex, thank you so much for, for this little sitting. We That was a perfect 18 minutes, I think. As okay. Always. It was a perfect 18 minutes. Um, guys, remember, don't forget, at the beginning of the show, I did all the plugs. You know where to find us. Search Deacon Hoover everywhere. Social media, dhrea.com is where you'll find our listings, all of our agents. Um, you'll get to see our ugly mugs and, and contact contact Alex directly through there. So for Alex, for myself, for everyone here at Deacon Hoover Real Estate Advisors and Mace Property Management, we thank you so much for tuning into this, and we will see you next time.